Hi, welcome back to the Clay Academy. I'm Mrs. Cherry. Today we're going to be making a cup from a cylinder. A cup is a cylinder shape. I made this one, kind of a goofy looking one, a little guy with a handle. It's a little, maybe a demi-tasse cup because it's kind of small, but it's tall and thin. So using a cylinder shape, we're going to create our own cup today. First, you're going to need some clay. So I'm going to slice off a slab to get started. You're going to need your boards. You're going to need your rolling pin. You're going to need your wire to cut off your clay with. And so I'm going to cut a slab and put it on my board to begin. So let's tilt our camera so you can see what I'm doing today. So I've got my slab and I've got my two boards. Remember when you roll something out, you want it to be a quarter inch thick. It's the perfect thickness. If it's too thick, it doesn't dry. If it's too thin, it can crack and break. So I'm going to roll, stand up to roll, pushing with my hands. I don't like to hold on to the handles. It gives me much more strength if I push down and hold my hands on the side. I'm gonna turn my clay and roll it again making sure that that rolling pin hits my boards. And we'll roll it. And I'm going to flip it over and roll the other side. This helps to compress the clay and to get it the right thickness. All right, I think that will do it. Now, I'm gonna take my rib, my metal rib, dip it in a little bit of water, and I'm going to smooth my clay surface because I see there's some little textures from the board that came up. If you want a nice smooth surface, this also helps to compress your clay. So, there we go. Now I want to cut a rectangle and so I want a nice even edge. So I'm going to use my boards to help me to get a nice even edge. I'm going to trim it right here with my pin tool and I'm going to trim this edge put my scraps to the side and trim this edge notice I'm holding my pin tool so that it it hits the edge of that board to keep it steady. Nice little trick. If you have a hard time cutting a straight line, that will help you. Now I want to see if this is big enough. So I'm going to stand it up and I'm going to put my ends together. Is that big enough for my cup? I think so. However, it's awfully tall. So I'm going to trim it again. I'm going to bring it down to size. I'm going to cut off about an inch of the height. So now I have the right height for my cup. Now I can put it together. You have two options. You can score along your inside, outside edges, I should say, 
and press it together like this. And you might need a little piece of clay on the inside to support it so that it doesn't come apart. But you can do that if you don't want a seam to show. I like the seams, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do inside, score the inside edge, and the outside edge. Make sure you've got enough water or slip on there. And then we're going to overlap. Overlap. Press it into place and makes a nice seam. I always keep my fingers inside when I'm pressing. That way I'm not pressing down on the cylinder and collapsing it. So I'm keeping my hand inside to support it. And I'm going to tap it a little. Tap it. And... I like that. So I'm checking the inside. Is that the right thickness or the right width, I should say? Looks pretty good to me. Now, one thing I always like to do with my seams whenever I have a seam like this, whenever you cut, remember you want to run your finger around the edge to smooth it because a sharp edge will cut when it's dry and fired. So we want to smooth that edge. Glaze does not like to stick to a sharp edge either. Then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to press in. Remember, support it with your finger inside to make some little buttons as a decoration. A little bit of texture always makes your piece more interesting. Now I need to make the base for this because it certainly won't hold any liquid if it's open. So I'm going to take my scraps and I'm going to push them all back together. And I'm going to knead it. Remember, stand up to knead. Use the palm of that hand, press down on your clay. Turn it, fold it over, press down, turn it, fold it over, press down. Two, three, or four times usually gets it all back into one whole piece again. We want to do that so that we can reuse the clay, and we also want to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles in it. So I'm going to roll it again. Stand up to roll, and I'm going to turn it, and roll it again. And that looks pretty good. I don't see any air bubbles. Oh, there might be one right there. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put my pin tool in the center and rub it. If you trap air in your work, it should look like a blister when you roll it out. And then you just want to pop it in the center to let that air out. If you don't, it can crack your piece. Now I'm going to decide which is going to be the top and which is the bottom. I think I like this as the top. So I am going to put this on my clay and I'm going to lightly trace around it with my pin tool. Very lightly. I don't want to press down and cut it yet. I could use a toothpick doing this or my pencil. And there's my trace. If I don't get it right, I can erase it if I didn't press very hard. Now I'm going to cut it out. Follow my line, and there we go, voila. Now, 
Remember, I did it on this side, not this side. So I need to turn it over and see if it fits. And that is very good. If it wasn't good, then I could retrim it again. But I'm going to score. Make sure you get that water on there, your slip. Remember, slip is made by just putting a little bit of clay into your water and turning it into mud. Slip is like your slip and water, or just water, if you don't want to make slip. Sometimes it gets messy. Is your glue, you have to have it. So I've got a sharp edge. I want to use my finger to smooth that. That looks very good. Now I'm going to turn it over and just tap it lightly. Make sure it's well attached. And if I've got any little errors or little things on the clay that I don't want, I can use my finger and just a little bit of water and smooth them out. Any flaws that you might not want there. Looks pretty good. Now, I need to make my little person. While I've been working, I had my garlic press sitting in my water with my slip. So that I can make hair for my person. I'm gonna use some of that extra clay now, and I'm gonna make a nose. Just gonna press it, kind of make a worm, and then press down the bottom to make the bulbous part of my nose. Flatten one side, it's kind of like a triangular shape. I like big noses and flatten one side. Then I'm going to score it. Score where it's going to go. And then put it on. Remember to hold your finger inside because I'm going to press against the clay. I don't want to collapse my cup. So that will help to hold that. And that looks pretty good. Nice little schnoz. Or big schnoz, I should say. There's nothing little about it. So there's my wonderful nose. Now I need to make some nostril holes. Use the end of that pencil. And make some... You gotta have some holes in your nose or you can't breathe. So there's my nostrils. You see them? Pretty cool. I'm gonna make some eyes. Come pinch off a little bit of clay. Make a couple little balls of clay. Roll it in the palm of your hand. If you want a ball, you can move your hand in a circle. Now, when I put these on, I'm going to put them close together. That always makes your piece look a little bit more comical if your eyes are real close together. So, I'm going to put them on at the same time. It's my little eyeball. I'm going to use my pencil and hole in my eye. You don't need to do that. You could paint that on with your glaze later if you wanted. Now I'm going to make some hair. Gotta have some hair. Take a little piece of that clay. Put it right inside that garlic press. And 
center the plunger there and then squeeze and voila hair now with hair because it's so fine these little pieces will break if I don't twist them a little bit and then I cannot score the end of hair but I can add slip so I'm going to put the slip on there and press it into place get some more plunge it plunge it squeeze it Twist it. There we go. Wet the end. And press it into place. I don't want to ever have my hair just sticking out by itself because it will break off for sure. But I can press it down to the side of my piece and it will be just fine. So I could add some more hair, but I have to keep in mind that this is a cup I'm going to be drinking out of, so I don't want whatever I'm adding to get in the way of my drinking. So I think I'll just leave it with a little bit of hair. So I've got my little guy. Now I'm gonna use the rest of my clay to make a handle. A handle is nothing more than a, a worm of clay. I'm just gonna squeeze it together here and then rock my hands back and forth, make a worm, turn it, put it on the board. If there are any wrinkles or anything like that, I wanna smooth it out, a little bit of water. I'm gonna rock it so it's the same size. And now I'm gonna measure before I cut it. I want it to be, hmm, that looks pretty. Now you wanna be able to put your fingers through it. So I think that's a pretty good, I'm gonna pinch off the end. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna score where it goes, where it goes. Scoring the end and the other end. Make sure you get plenty of your slip on there or water so it attaches. I'm going to press on the base. And there we go. And there we go. Make sure you get the bend just right. Is my hand going to fit through that? Looks good to me. Now I see a little bit of crackling on the handle because I bent it. So I'm just going to use just a little bit of water. Smooth out those crackles. And I'm supporting it as I'm pressing on it so it doesn't collapse. That looks very nice. My last step, remember if you're going to bring this to me and I will fire it for you at this point in time after you get it all done and you put your name on it, you want to wrap it up in plastic so that it doesn't dry out because if it is totally dry when you transport it, it will break very easily. So I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to write my name on the bottom using the dull part of my pencil. Little pieces of clay, I can knock those off. And there's my signature. We're all done. It looks wonderful. I'm happy with it. And that's our lesson for today. How to make a cylinder into a cup. So, Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming, and we'll talk to you soon.